This is when the weight shifts back to the heel and you're leaning forward all the time. And then it's not going this way, it is going this way. You know, and it's, it's going this way, the hip comes in line with the body and at no time should you start going backwards. Because when you start going backward, that's when the bar start leaving in front of you. You don't want it to go swinging out. So from here, you have, in this movement here, you got the bar traveling real good. You got a momentum going. And it's going to travel higher. Now, I've measured some of the heights and all that. A clean, the bar has to go to a navel height. Snatch, the bar has to come between the clavicle and the bottom of the chest, right here. You gotta have that height for the snatch, that height for the clean. So, naturally, here you start shrugging to go on the clean. And then you're going, when you're standing straight up and you shrug, you are actually going straight down body straight up and down, so naturally your feet, and this thing of course, bent and all that. So when you hit bottom, you bounce right out, like that. On the snatching, you never go back because you start swinging. You gotta keep that bar close to your chest, so you are really up there. And then when you go in, you are going to be like this, really inclined, this kind of position. Actually, it would be like this. That bar got to be around here. And you got to have that back bar. So basically, on the snatching, you are really getting that. Your hip is going backward. It's not going down. This is what you would have to do to do the press behind neck. You can't do it any other way. This is the snatch position. This is the, the kind of snatch position you gotta hit. Perpendicular to the floor, usually right over where your feet would be, and you got this thing sticking out. If the bar is going too far back, you need more forward to compensate. If the bar is a little bit forward, you lower your hip to compensate. So you got that ability a little play here. If the bar goes beyond over here, you can't save it. You keep your arms locked and it would go away from you. It would not fall on you. Too many people, beginners especially, they let go. They don't know where the bar is. It usually hit them somewhere in the back and all that. Whereas if it's like this and the arms is perfectly straight, they would avoid all that. And by the time your bar, hand is over here, your hand would open up automatically and you would release the bar. So it got no chance of falling on you. Any questions? Yes? Um, do you think anybody should? In either one of my book, I don't say power snatch or power clean because the pulling system is completely different. Um, let's say a guy is six foot one, six foot two, and he's going to do power snatch. You know how high that bar has to go up? And yet, you never pull the bar up that high. When you start pulling the bar that high, you are really employing your arms. In Olympic lifting, you do not employ your arms. You know, um, snatching, like I say, really, all you got to do is have the bar come up to here. All to here is nothing. You could do it if you want to, and you could use a light weight as a warm-up for, for, you know, but 
in, in reality, if you're spending a lot of time on power snatch, power clean, you're learning to pull incorrectly because to do a power snatch, power clean, you got to blast off the floor by the way. It's usually not employing the legs, you're using your back to start pulling immediately. Because it got to be explosive on the floor, because you're going to get it way up there. But in the actual lifting, all you got to do is navel height for the clean, this high for the... And you don't even see that a lot of time, because they're all trying to go sneak under it. Yeah. So, I, I in both my books, especially my first book, I mentioned the fact that, hey, power snatch, power clean, don't do it. I, if you want to be a good, a specialist in the Olympic lift, for anything else, yeah, go ahead and do it. You know, football players or whatever, they, they stress power clean, that's the easiest for them to do. That's okay. They're not into Olympic lifting. But if you want to be an Olympic lifter, you got to consider yourself a specialist in the Olympic lift. You are an athlete. You got to think of yourself not as a strong man, not as a power lifter or anything like that, but as an athlete. And as an athlete, that means good leverage, good technique, good speed, timing, everything. And if it's to take away from all those things, you're doing the wrong thing. You know, if you enjoy yourself doing all those things, fine. You know, the important thing is you're happy. But if you want to be a good lifter, you've got to focus on it. It's like Hoffman always say, if you want to be an Olympic lifter, lifting got to be first in your life. And so you got to be thinking, is this going to help my Olympic lifting? If it doesn't, forget it. But if it's going to make me happy, okay. <laughs> you know, it, it's, this is why usually I go to the Dawn YMCA and I sit down. And I don't try to inject any ideas to anybody unless they ask for help. Because if they're having fun, they're enjoying it and all that, that's okay. That's what they want to do. But if they want to learn, and there are some people that you could tell them the correct thing, but for some reason they won't accept it. They still prefer to do what they're doing. I've had one lifters that I've known for over 25 years, still with the same mistake, <laughs> same thing I would have to repeat. And he could clean. Now imagine a guy 62 years of age, weighing about 62 kilos, cleaning 115. But he can't jerk it. He could do maybe not even 105. So I say, Gary. When you go in a contest, you gotta go on the clean and jerk what you can jerk, not what you can clean. You know, like, what's the sense of cleaning if you can't jerk it, right? So, he's limiting his ability because he never corrected it, and he starts with 95 kilo clean and jerk, he does 100, even 105, he fails. Yet, he could do 115 clean. And I've worked with him for, and the guy's 62 years old, you never think he's that old with the way he's lifting. Yeah. But, you know, he doesn't accept it, and what are you going to do? <laughs> so, I have guys like that. And I have people who stop by, and all of a sudden, after 20 minutes, they understand what I'm saying. Wow, it's like, it opened up their eyes and all that. Wow. they. they yeah, I got it. I feel it. I know what you're talking about. But then I don't see them afterward yet. I mean, they go back to the mainland, wherever, and then, uh, but at least he got exposed to the right technique at one time. Powerful. Lifting from the blocks. What from the hang? Also. You know, uh, was it not? One of the good coaches said he teaches snatching from the top down. I said, you know what? If you're going to snatch from the top down, fine. But 
anything above the knee is very easy. But the problem is going around the knee. So the problem begins when you start from the floor. So I don't advocate starting from here because this is the easiest way, way to snatch. It's rhythm, easy. This is the problem, getting the bar around the knee. And so I say, my method of teaching is from the floor all the time. It's really getting down to the basic. But you could teach anybody how to hang snatch. They could hit rock bottom position real good. But let them hang below the knee and do it. It becomes different. I'm not disagreeing. I just wanted to know what you was going to say about it. <laughs> so starting off the blocks or hanging from below the knee would be OK. Yeah, you got to, you know, I, the blocks are good, but I would still say, hey, stuff on the floor. And emphasize, if you're emphasizing certain phase of the pool, still do it from the floor and emphasize that certain area. But everything got to be basic from the floor. <clears throat> Who's it now? Who's that Japanese girl that... Uh...